Hey, Asher kids, and welcome back. And in today's video, we will be discussing your horoscope for the month of July 2021. And super excited to get into this, as this will be a very easy breezy month compared to the month of June. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. So starting off here, on the 7th of July, Mercury will shift into the sign of Gemini. Now, Mercury has had a little bit of a challenging time as it has been shifting through Pisces and through the sign of Aries. And as it came into the sign of Taurus, we got a little bit of that friendly influence of Venus. But now Mercury is coming into its home sign officially, where it feels the most comfortable, the most relaxed here in the sign of Gemini. So this is a huge moment of your intellectual skills, your entrepreneurship skills, all of your gifts and talents, and being able to use this easily and effortlessly. So this is a huge time of efficiency. Anything dealing and relating in terms of business and moving contracts, getting negotiations done, working through details and information and anything involved in communication prospers through this transit. And of course, this will depend on what is going on personally within your chart. But this is a great transit here of Mercury shifting into its home sign of Gemini. On the 7th of July, we will see Mars come into a conjunction with the sun. And as Mars comes close with the sun, we will see a combust Mars. This is very difficult as Mars comes into a combustion, it is coming too close to the sun. And we say that the sun is burning or purifying out the toxins of this energy and bringing it into its fullest potential. This is the light of the consciousness from the sun that is really lighting up this energy of Mars. But Mars is already a very fiery and combustible energy. And so this becomes very dangerous as the sun comes close with Mars, where we can see a lot of anger, a lot of aggression, a lot of resentment that can show up here through this transit. So this is a big moment of watching out for your temper, watching out for little irritations and stressors that can come up during this moment as Mars is really unhappy in this combustion here. And Mars is really unhappy in the sign of cancer as well, where it is debilitated here, having a very difficult time. And so this is especially a time here where our emotions are heightened and especially those hotter, fiery emotions where you want to be very cautious with your temper and how you are expressing yourself. On the 16th of July, the sun will shift into the sign of cancer. Now, the sun is very happy to come into the sign of Cancer. It was having a little bit of a tricky time there in the sign of Gemini, where it is more of a neutral influence. But here, the sun is very friendly with the moon, giving us very good positive energy as we shift into this transit. The sun in Cancer is really giving a sensational feel as we are coming into this summer season. And so this is a great time of having fun, of expressing yourself, this very changeable and moving energy of cancer that is very emotional, very sensitive. It is all about nurturing and having fun and enjoying ourselves, remembering that cancer is controlling the fourth house of our comforts, our luxury, our pleasures, our nourishment. And so this is a very soulful time, a very nourishing time through this summer month here of really enjoying yourself, expressing yourself, connecting with others through this transit of the sun in Cancer. On the 16th, we will also see this conjunction here with the sun and Mercury. And so this is really a time of brilliance as the sun is coming close with the planet of Mercury. This really increases the intellect. And so Mercury does really well in the combustion here with the sun as it is 
purifying and lighting up this energy, giving profound knowledge and insight. So this is a great time in terms of communication, in terms of learning, in terms of using your intellect, your talents, your skills, anything related into business is huge at this time. And especially with this energy of the sun here in the sign of cancer, a lot of this emotional expression that is really great in terms of capturing people's attention and relating to others at a deeper emotional level. Moving forward on the 17th of July, we will see Venus shift into the sign of Leo. This is a very tricky placement here as Venus and the sun are not so friendly with one another. Venus, of course, is all about relating, peace, connection, enjoyment, pleasure, and Leo is a very dominating and commanding energy, right? Leo has a very aristocratic feel where it is all about knowledge, power, money, influence, organizing skills. Leo wants the attention, the appreciation, it wants to be in charge. And so Venus is having a very difficult time as Venus wants to naturally share and connect with others. And so this can be a very complicated time in terms of your relationships. You want to be careful of any ego issues that are coming up here in terms of selfish desires and wants within your relationship. This is a time of focusing on not only yourself, but those who you are also connecting to. Is it all about you or is it about both of you as well? So this is a huge time of really paying close attention into those connections and how you are relating to other people. On the 20th of July, we will see Mars shift into the sign of Leo as well. Mars does really well here in the sign of Leo as Mars and the sun are great friends. And so this is a great amount of energy and drive that is being given here through this transit of Mars in Leo. Finally, coming out of that debilitation of Mars and Cancer, where we have this energy, this enthusiasm, this motivation, and this power to drive through our task and daily responsibilities. So this is giving a tremendous amount of power with Leo representing power and dominance, that leadership, that authority, and Mars being the soldier, giving us this willpower, this drive to push towards our goals. This is huge as we are shifting here into this hotter summer season here throughout this month of July. On the 21st, we will see Venus come into a conjunction with Mars. And so this is a very intense transit. This is happening in the sign of Leo, of course, where Mars is much more comfortable in this conjunction. Venus is having a very challenging time through this transit of Venus in Leo. But as Venus and Mars come together, this gives a very explosive and passionate energy. As Venus is connected to our sexuality, our desires, our pleasure, our enjoyment, and Mars is very much charged up with energy, aggression, passion. And so this is a big explosion of sensual energy and power at this time of really expressing yourself, doing the things that you enjoy, and great benefits in terms of those who are in relationships at this time going through this transit. On the 25th of July, we will see Mercury shift into the sign of Cancer. This is a little bit of a tricky placement. Mercury is coming into the sign of the mind, which is very good, but Cancer is very imaginative. It is very much intuitive rather than so much so being about the logic, the details, the information. And so Mercury is coming into a zone of thinking more in terms of right brain thinking, of feeling, of imagining, of thinking internally. And so this is really a time of going within and finding that peace within yourself. A lot of clues as to what is it is that's going to bring you the most happiness, the most enjoyment. And this is a major theme throughout this entire year as we are closing out these retrogrades, big moment of Neptune retrograde, of Jupiter retrograde, pointing towards what is bringing you the most happiness, the most enjoyment, the most pleasure in your life. And 
Is it aligned with your purpose, your destiny of where you are going, what you are headed towards? If you have not checked out those videos on Jupiter retrograde and Neptune retrograde, I will leave links above and down below in the description as well. Also on the 25th, we will be closing out this month of July with our, our last major transit here of the sun coming into another conjunction with Mercury. And remember that this is happening this time in the sign of Leo instead of Cancer. And so this is really a huge moment where we are seeing this energy here of this Mercury Cancer, which is giving us this great ability to communicate and connect to others on an emotional level. And we're seeing this sun in cancer, which is giving us very deep feeling, very much a deep soul connection to our purpose, our destiny, our mission. And so this is a great time of connection, of communication, of expressing yourself, of connecting and relating to others. And this brilliance, once again, of the sun and Mercury coming together but with it being more intuitive, more imaginative, more internalized with it here in this watery sign of cancer. So let's go ahead and jump into the horoscopes. And keep in mind that I am using Vedic astrology and not your Western tropical astrology. So this is not based on the seasons. This is based upon the exact placements of the stars in the sky. Also, keep in mind that this is not based on your sun sign. Here in Vedic astrology, the moon is your zodiac sign. And so the moon is playing a huge role in your personality as it is playing out your behaviors, your patterns, your life experience, the way that you think and feel internally, right? This is very similar to how we see people react differently and strangely during different cycles of the moon because the moon is affecting directly your behavioral patterns. This is the core of who you are. The ascendant is also very important as well as that is the physical map of your life. So the ascendant is the lesson, the experience that you have come into this existence to gain in this life. And so both of these are great indicators of your horoscope. And so I always recommend that you are looking from either your moon sign or your ascendant throughout these horoscopes. So let's go ahead and start off with the sign of Aries. And of course, for all of you with an Aries ascendant, you have the original zodiac. So this is going to look very similar to what we talked about in the actual transits. So starting off here, for those of you with an Aries moon or Aries ascendant, this will be Mercury shifting into your third house, excellent position, as Mercury naturally loves being in this position of communication, of entrepreneurship, of the courage to put yourself out there and express your talents and skills. And so this is a great time in terms of business, in terms of your goals, your projects, of what you want to accomplish and being able to put that out. Anything where you are doing communication, writing, public speaking, connecting to others, making business deals, this is going to go smoothly through this Mercury transit. And of course, you always want to look at any of the planets within your natal chart if they are also involved with this as that can change the outcome of how these planets are playing out. Now, on July 16th, we will see the sun shift into your fourth house of Cancer. This is a huge time where the center focus is on home, on comfort, on security. So this is a great time of enjoying yourself, of being more relaxed, of connecting internally with yourself. Finding that peace of mind is a huge center focus as we're shifting here into this season of cancer. We will also see Venus shift into your fifth house. Excellent position. Even though Venus is in its enemy sign here in Leo, this is in your fifth house of creativity Great placement for Venus as this is giving you a tremendous amount of creativity, tremendous amount of expression to put out into the world. And especially with Venus controlling your second and seventh house, this is a great time of expressing your skills, your creativity, and putting that out into the world. A lot of popularity, a lot of wealth that can come out of you 
making an impact on others through your skills and gifts at this time. We will also see Mars that will be joining up with this Venus and Leo as well there in that fifth house, giving a tremendous amount of passion here throughout this month of July. And you want to be careful here with Mars coming into that fifth house, a lot of this energy of enjoyment, of fun, where you can really overindulge and overdo it on the enjoyment factor. But this is a huge time where your creative talents, your skills, your passion is increased through this transit of Mars and Venus in Leo. We will also see Mercury once again coming into this space of your fourth house. And so Mercury is moving very quickly now as it has left its retrograde zone. As it comes here into your fourth house, this is a great time for your education. Many people forget that that fourth house is the actual foundation or institution that you are receiving your education from. And so literally and figuratively, this is a great placement for your education, where your skills, your knowledge are hugely being impacted through this transit of Mercury and Cancer as it is shifting here through this fourth house. Great time for thinking, great time for your imagination, your intuition, for tapping deeper into your mind at this time. This can also be a time where you're a little bit restless or you have a feeling of wanting to travel, wanting to move, wanting to do various different things here where there's a lot of energy within your home environment. So there can be a lot of shifting and changing that is happening within the home or even leaving the home on a trip as well. For those of you with a Taurus moon or Taurus ascendant, Mercury will be shifting here into your second house. This is a huge time of your speech as that second house is all about your vocal tonality. And so as Mercury comes into the second house, very good time in terms of expressing yourself and putting your beliefs, your values out into the world and really expressing yourself through this. Also with Virgo controlling that fifth house, this is a huge time of self-expression in a big way for those of you here with this Taurus moon, Taurus ascendant. Sun is shifting here into your third house. Once again, huge focus on communication for those of you. As the sun is coming into this third house, this is a great position for your business. The sun is controlling our career and it's coming here into the third house of entrepreneurship, of communication, of your technical skills and talents. So this is a great time of really expressing your gifts, your skills to the world. A huge spotlight is being put on this third house. We will also see Venus and Mars that is shifting there into your fourth house. And so this can be a time where you are spending a lot on things that you want with all of this passion that is happening here in this fourth house of comforts, of pleasure, of enjoyment, of luxury. There is a lot of spending and a lot of thinking and planning in terms of your desires and the things that you want for yourself. And so you want to be cautious throughout this transit of any sort of overspending, making sure that everything is in check. We will also see Mercury shifting there into your third house. Once again, center stage on communication throughout this month of July. With Mercury coming into that third house, this can be a great time of putting your skills and talents to use. Mercury bringing that detail, that analysis into that third house. This is huge in terms of business, of communication for those of you with a Taurus moon, Taurus ascendant. Let's go ahead and shift forward to those of you with a Gemini moon or Gemini ascendant. And starting off here, we will see Mercury shift into your first house. And so throughout this transit here, we will see that this is a time of you becoming much more talkative, much more expressive, much more about putting your ideas out into the world. Mercury has been back in your 12th house for some time now, where this has been more of a quiet time of looking internally within yourself, pulling and drawing from your subconscious, 
now all of this coming out into the forefront, this is a great time to take your ideas that you've gained internally and to express this to others. This is a big time where your goals, your dreams can flourish. And especially with the Mercury controlling your first and fourth house, you are blessed and fortunate through Mercury's rulership. We will see the sun also shifting there into your second house. So center stage is put on your family, on your values, on your security at this time. This is a great time of making more money, of saving, of paying close attention to your stability and security. This can also be a time where your family demands a lot of attention from you with this sun transiting there in that second house. Also making your speech very authoritative where this is a great time of leadership, of gathering people together, of organizing events here with this sun that is shifting through this second house. We will also see Venus and Mars that is coming here into your third house of communication. This is giving a tremendous amount of passion once again, this is making your speech very dominating, very authoritative, where you can get things done, you can organize things, plan things very well, and anything that you are passionate about, flourishing greatly through your business, through your skills, through your ability to gather and to put together tasks and projects is huge at this moment. We will also see Mercury shifting into your second house. Once again, huge focus that is centered around your family. This can be a time where your family is reaching out for help, is reaching out for answers with this Mercury activity that is increased here through this second house. For those of you with a Cancer Moon or Cancer Ascendant, we will start off here with Mercury shifting into your 12th house. This is a huge time of reflection, of going inward, with this 12th house being all about isolation, seclusion, your subconscious, your imagination. And so this is a big time of meditation, of going internally, of pulling up this deep wisdom and insight within yourself. Mercury is giving a tremendous amount of clarity. And especially as it comes close to the sun here, we will see a lot of clarity and insight that will come through this transit here. The sun will shift into your first house, putting a spotlight on you as that first house is you. And so this is a huge time where you can come off as very magnetic, very charming with this bright, sunny energy that is captivating your first house of self. This is a huge time of shining, of you putting yourself out into the world. And this can be a huge time of your confidence increasing. You want to be careful, though, with ego, as the sun can easily turn into the ego with this big, bright need to be seen and recognized. Now, we will also see Venus and Mars shifting into your second house, where there is a huge passion in the way that you are speaking, in the values and the things that you want. And you want to be careful with overindulgence throughout this transit here as that second house is all about your possessions, your material gains. And so here in this transit, this can be a huge time where you are overindulging, where you are taking too much possessions and spending too much at this time with this very fiery and intense energy of Mercury and Venus coming together, and especially in the sign of Leo, which is a fiery sign as well. So especially you want to be careful with spending at this time. Also want to be careful in terms of your food intake, where this can tremendously cause problems in terms of your digestion as well. We will also see Mercury shifting here into your first house. Once again, huge focus that is on you at this time. And Mercury also increasing that popularity as well. Mercury, though, is a very challenging sign for those of you with a Cancer Moon, Cancer Ascendant, as it sits back in your 12th house and over in your third house. And so this can be a time where there is some difficulty around communication and how you are expressing yourself. There can be a little bit of this fogginess and disconnection that's happening with Mercury controlling that 12th house. 
For those of you with a Leo moon or Leo ascendant, Mercury will be shifting back into your 11th house. This is a great time for your gains and accomplishments. Mercury is a huge money indicator for those of you with a Leo moon, Leo ascendant coming here into your 11th house of gains. So this is a huge time of bringing in money, resources, and connecting to others, connecting to social networks, connecting to your business partners at this time where there's a lot of growth that can take place in this area. We will also see the sun shifting back into your 12th house. And so this can be a little bit of a time where you are shying away or where you are looking to go more internally within yourself. The sun being your chart ruler, especially bringing you back into your 12th house comfort zone. And so this is especially a time where it can be difficult to move things forward in terms of business, in terms of putting yourself out in the forefront. This is a great time for relaxation, for vacation, for enjoying the moment. We will also see Venus and Mars shifting there into your first house. Venus coming into your first house, putting a spotlight on you, even though Venus is a very complicated relationship with your ascendant Lord, the sun. Venus coming here into the first house can give you a little bit more attention, but you want to be careful here with Venus controlling that 10th house and that third house where especially the focus should be on business. When this becomes too egotistical, this can give you reverse results through this Venus transit. Mercury here is great. Once again, increasing the wealth, increasing the ability to make things happen in your business. Mercury coming into that first house gives a very youthful and magnetic appearance that draws people towards you. So this is a great time for communication as Mercury moves forward into this first house. We will also see Mercury shifting there into your 12th house, where there is a lot of deep internal insight that is happening at this time. Once again, with this transit of the sun back in your 12th house, this is a huge time to go inward, to reflect, to look for deeper insight within yourself. And so great wisdom, great clarity, great insight internally within your subconscious. Great time for meditation, great time for journaling, great time for walking for taking that time to bring yourself into a place of peace and clarity. Moving forward here, for those of you with a Virgo moon or Virgo ascendant, we will see Mercury shifting there into your 10th house of Gemini. This is a great time for your business, your career, your responsibilities. Mercury being your chart ruler and coming into this 10th house space, this is making great ability to communicate with the world, to put your skills and talents in there. This is increasing it. And Mercury has had a very difficult time as it has been back in your 10th house and your ninth house, and especially back there in that debilitation of your eighth house. But coming forward into this 10th house, great time to once again, put your skills and talents out into the forefront. We will also see the sun shifting into your 11th house. And so this is a big time, once again, for your gains, for your accomplishments, for your achievements, everything in your career and the way that you're presenting yourself coming center stage. And the sun coming into this 11th house is tremendously helping you come out of your shell with Leo controlling that 12th house. We're pulling this energy out into the public. So this is a great time where you may see some increased confidence, some increased self-expression with this transit here. We will also see Venus and Mars shifting into your 12th house. And so this is especially a time of gaining some deeper clarity, gaining some deeper insight. This is a time where many of you are looking to organize, to plan from the background to make this public image, this display of what you are presenting work properly. And so this is especially a time where you may feel that you're coming into a place of 
wanting to take that time to yourself to organize things specifically to pan out all of the details on your own time. We will see Mercury also shifting there into that 11th house. And so once again, that increase of wealth of your career, your achievements is huge with Mercury controlling your first house. You are coming into this space of great success. For those of you with a Libra moon or Libra ascendant, Mercury will be shifting here into your ninth house. This is a great time of studying, of learning, of picking up a new language, of learning about a new culture, of traveling at this time with Mercury coming through this ninth house. Mercury is a very is a very beneficial planet that has a very good relationship with your ascendant coming into this ninth house, increasing the intellect, the wisdom, the insight at this time. Great opportunity to learn, to connect to a teacher, to travel, to pick up a new interest. We will also see the sun shifting there into your 10th house. This is a big time for career. The sun is lighting up this 10th house of your public image. This is a moment where your magneticism is increasing tremendously, giving a captivating public image and persona at this time. This is a big time where people will gravitate towards you in the way that you are presenting yourself. This is huge for your opportunities and gains and achievements, especially with the sun controlling your 11th house. Now we will also see Venus and Mars shifting forward into this 11th house. Once again, huge time for your reputation, for how you are being seen by the public. This is a huge time where you can see some popularity sparking up with this Venus transit through the 11th house. You want to be careful though with Mars coming into your 11th house. Mars is not a friend to your chart ruler and Mars is controlling your second house and your seventh house, which can spark up arguments and disagreements within your workspace, along with your friend circles and your large social gatherings. And so this can be a big time where you're finding yourself in a lot of fights and arguments with this transit here of Mars coming into the 11th house. You want to be very cautious with this. Venus is trying to soften the blow here, but this Martian influence is much stronger as we have Venus in its enemy sign. Now we will also see Mercury shifting forward into your 10th house. And this is great in terms of communication, of doing business dealings, with this Mercury influence that is coming here into this house. For those of you with a Scorpio moon or Scorpio ascendant, Mercury will be shifting back into your eighth house. This is a very intense time where you can see a lot of shifts and changes happening. That eighth house already being about crisis and sudden events and Mercury being a very quick and changeable planet. This is a time where you can experience a lot of ups and downs, a lot of moments of disappointment, of frustrations with this Mercury energy that is constantly moving and changing through this eighth house. And so a lot of moments of luck, a lot of moments of losing that luck, this fluctuation of going back and forth is happening here through this transit. And this is a great opportunity for transformation and spiritual growth within yourself at this time. All of these changes bringing up problems and issues to work through, which you are a master at doing. So we will also see the sun shifting through your ninth house. Great position. This is lighting up this house, which is one of the most beneficial houses for those of you with a Scorpio moon, Scorpio ascendant, where you're learning your traveling, your education, your interest is increased through the sun. This is an area that is lighting up for you, where you can get a lot of teachers, a lot of great insight, a lot of great experience at this time. We will also see Venus and Mars, which are shifting there through your 
10th house of career. This is a very difficult placement with Venus coming into this 10th house where this can give you a great public image, but this can also create some issues in terms of abandonment, in terms of disappearing with Venus controlling that 12th house. And so there can be some moments here of feeling as if you are capturing others' attention and them disappearing and leaving from the moment through this transit. But Mars is holding up strong in that 10th house, Mars being your chart ruler, very powerful where this gives you the drive and determination to move towards your goals and responsibilities. This makes you a very powerful leader throughout this transit with Mars coming here into this 10th house. Mercury will also transit through your ninth house. This is great for your education. Once again, that ninth house is a huge highlight for those of you with the Scorpio moon, Scorpio ascendant, big experiences, big lessons, big opportunities to travel, to gain knowledge at this time is opening up to many of you here. For those of you with a Sagittarius moon or Sagittarius ascendant, Mercury will be shifting into your seventh house. This is putting a big spotlight on communication with Gemini controlling that seventh house of partnership. This is also a tricky time though, as Virgo sits there in your fourth house alone with this energy of Gemini there in a Marca house. And so this is an area where you can run into some disagreements, some arguments, some conflict within your relationships. And so this is a big area of really taking the time to think everything through. With Virgo controlling that fourth house, you can be somewhat critical and harsh in your approach to communicating and relating to others at this time. We will also see the sun that is shifting there into your eighth house, putting a huge spotlight on your spiritual growth and transformation. And so this can be a very intense period of time where you're seeing a lot of changes and fluctuations that are happening within your life, major endings that are coming up here as a major lesson for your growth with the sun controlling that ninth house. And so this is a big opportunity to learn, to grow, to reach new heights in your life as you're going through these sudden events and changes internally. We will also see Venus and Mars shifting forward into this ninth house, putting a huge focus on your learning. Now, this is tricky with Mercury and Venus being enemies to your ruler Jupiter. And so they are not having a great time in this ninth house where you can run into some obstacles in relating to your teachers, your elders, your mentors at this time. This is a great time, though, to gain some great insight and to work on any sort of difficulty centered around relationships, once again, with Mercury controlling that seventh house of partnership. We will also see Mercury pushing forward into your eighth house again, where this is increasing those fluctuations and changes that can happen, where you are being taken through this roller coaster of events that is changing you, transforming you internally. For those of you with a Capricorn moon or Capricorn ascendant, we will see Mercury shifting into your sixth house, where your responsibilities, your goals are a huge highlight at this time. With Mercury coming in here, this gives you great focus and attention to detail in terms of dealing with your task and daily routine. This can also bring about a lot of challenges and difficulties as well. This sixth house being connected to your obstacles and your challenges within your daily life. And this is a big time where you can find yourself in situations with competition, with these obstacles and delays that are coming up here. Mercury trying to give you the strength to work through this at this time. Using your communication skills is a huge focal point to getting around problems and obstacles that are showing up here in your everyday life. We will also see the sun shifting into your seventh house, where this is putting a huge spotlight on your relationships. Difficult placement as the sun is unhappy as it controls your eighth house. 
And so the sun is a huge enemy to your ascended Lord. This is really bringing up some traumatic difficulties around relationships and connections. There is a lot here that needs to be brought to the surface and expressed that is being held secretly there in that eighth house. And so this is a big time of really connecting in deeper and tapping into that eighth house energy, understanding how to express and show everything within your close connections is huge throughout this transit. We will also see Venus and Mars shifting through your eighth house. Once again, big focus that is centered around your relationships and connections. Mercury and Venus, both great friends to your chart ruler coming through this eighth house where there's a lot to work through internally within your connections and within yourself, where there's a lot that needs to be transformed and worked through internally for those of you here with Capricorn Moon, Capricorn Ascendant. And ending this off here with Mercury coming into that seventh house zone as well. So this is a huge time of, once again, relationships being the focal point where your communication is important. You must be able to use your communication skills, your expression to be able to work through these obstacles and delays in terms of relationships. For those of you with an Aquarius moon or Aquarius ascendant, we will see Mercury shifting here into this sixth house zone where your responsibilities, your duties, your commitments are huge at this time. Expressing those talents and gifts within that fifth house is tremendous. And so any sort of projects that you're working on that you're committed to is a huge focal point at this time. This can also be a time of opening up in relationships as well with that fifth house being connected to romance. Mercury coming in here, very curious, wanting to explore at this time. And so this can be a great time of having fun, of enjoying yourself, of trying new things through this transit here of Mercury and Gemini. We will also see the sun moving forward into this sixth house zone. Once again, huge spotlight that is being put on your work, your responsibilities, your commitment at this time, and making you a huge leader in any sort of tasks and projects that you're taking on. So this is huge. You want to be careful, though. The sun is a challenging position for those of you with an Aquarius moon or ascendant as it gets debilitated in that seventh house. And so this is really a huge time of focusing on your confidence, your self-esteem of being able to stand up to those who are walking over you. We will also see Venus and Mars shifting forward into your seventh house. Once again, huge focus on how are you relating and connecting with others. These energies of Venus and Mars are tricky. Mars is a great energy as it controls your third house of communication, but having a little bit of a difficult time as it also controls that 10th house of career as well. This is a great time in terms of your career, your projects, once again, but challenges centered around relationships on a personal level where you can run into some issues with ego and control. And so this is a huge area, once again, of working on your self-esteem, your confidence of being able to deal with those who are not respecting or looking up to you within your connections. We're also seeing this energy of Venus, which is a great friend to you and is highlighting your ability to learn and grow with Libra there controlling that ninth house. And so this is a huge area where the experience, the growth, the lesson is centered around your relationships and how you can improve upon yourself, how you can better yourself in this area of your partnerships and close connections. Ending it off here, we will have Mercury once again shifting here into Cancer, where there's a huge focus centered around your responsibilities, your duties, your commitment with this energy. You want to be careful of fluctuation. Mercury, once again, is not as logical as it comes into this sign of cancer. It becomes much more intuitive and receptive. And so this is great in terms of any sort of service or humanitarian projects 
You want to be careful, though, of drifting from the details and getting lost in this sea of imagination as Mercury is not in its traditional logical technical position. For those of you who have your moon or ascendant in the sign of Pisces, we will be seeing Mercury shifting here into your fourth house. This is a great time of relaxation, of finding comfort within yourself throughout this transit. Now, Mercury is a very tricky planet as it controls your seventh house, which is a marker house, and sits alone there in that fourth house. And so this is an area where you can find some difficulties centered around relationships, around how you were connecting to others, and finding a way to express and communicate your thoughts is huge at this time. We will also see the sun shifting forward here into the sign of Cancer as it sits there in your fifth house. Great position. This is highlighting your creativity, your talents, your knowledge, your skills. And so putting a huge spotlight on what you can do. And this is a huge time where you can achieve great popularity and success. And so big time of working on projects on putting your skills out into the forefront as the sun aspects there to your 11th house. We will also see Venus and Mars shifting forward here into the sign of Leo there in your sixth house. Tricky position as that sixth house is being controlled by Leo where the ego is being diminished through this sixth house position. And so this is a huge time of working on your confidence and self-esteem as Mars comes through here. Mars is a great planet for your ascendant Lord with Scorpio up there in that ninth house. And so this is a great time of expressing yourself, putting your ideas out into the world and being very straightforward and direct in your communication approach. We will also see, of course, this energy of Venus coming in here challenging position as Venus is a very difficult planet for those of you with a Pisces moon or Pisces ascendant. And so this is a huge time of being careful in terms of your relationships and in terms of how you are communicating with Venus controlling that third house of communication and the eighth house of secrets and crisis. This is a big time where you can see some difficulties and some emotional upsets around your communication and those that you are relating to. And so you want to stay within your self-esteem, your confidence, once again, with that sixth house being hugely highlighted throughout this transit. So this has been my interpretation of your horoscope for July 2021. I hope you all enjoyed this. If you like this video, feel free to leave a like as well as a comment. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button along with the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new content. We have a lot that is coming as we approach this summer month, but even more so as we get into the fall, we have those major eclipses starting off in November as we start to complete this eclipse cycle that started back in the month of May. So a lot of huge changes coming and a lot of retrogrades where we have a lot of reviewing, a lot of internal work to do at this time. If you are interested in learning more on Vedic astrology, I do have a course available in the Facebook group, Astrology Lessons with Daquan Jones. I will leave a link for that down below in the description along with the comments. I want to thank you all so much for joining. I hope you all have a great day and I will see you in the next video.